Good morning, Miley. You've been shopping. No, they gave away prizes this morning for moving to the back of the bus. Of course I've been shopping. Come in and feast your eyes. <laughs> I went absolutely out of my mind at Madame Sylvia's this morning. Wait till you see what I've got in stock. Just wait, wait, wait. It is absolutely divine. It's the outer end. Now, wait. Here. Isn't that Ba-ba-boo? The end? Susie, you said to me last week, and I quote, Vi, I must get over this terrible money-spending habit I have caught. I'm a spendthrift, a prodigal, a sugar mama. You said, and again I quote, Vi, I must start saving my money because I have only $1.98 in my bank account, and that's shocking. Oh, honey, that's a figure of speech. Nobody in the whole world has $1.98 in the bank. <laughs> Actually, I have... A dollar seventy-seven? <laughs> well, all I can say is you had no business spending your entire paycheck in one lunch hour. But I didn't. I didn't even have time to cash my check. Here it is. Then where did you get the money for all this? Oh. Well, I had forty dollars tucked away in a little white envelope. Forty dollars tucked away in a little white envelope? Susie, you didn't. Of course I didn't. I mean, yes, I did, but didn't walk. Well, that was the money Sylvia, Gertrude, you and I chipped in for Celeste Haney's bridal shower. That money didn't belong to you. Now, by what is the difference? The shower isn't until Friday night, is it? And the monogramming on the sheets and the towels won't be ready until Friday afternoon, so I'll just pick them up on the way to the shower. You spent the money. <laughs> Sylvia's, Gertrude's, and my hard-earned money. Now, honey, I just borrowed it. All I have to do is cash my check, put the $40 back in, and no one will know the difference. Well, all I can say is you just better pull yourself together and learn the value of a dollar. This spending business is a disease. You're sick, sick, sick. I am not, not, not. R, R, R. Oh, Susie, you're my friend. And as your friend, I can only tell you the truth. You're sick, and you must cure yourself. Bye. You know that you are right. I am going to start a cure right now. Good. How? Well, here is my paycheck. Now, you cash it and keep the money. I'll make you custodian of the funds. Now, I want you to give me a dollar a day for lunch and car fare, and not a cent more. I'll be very strict, and I'll take good care of this. A dollar a day, no matter what I say, just a dollar a day. Susie, are you sure you don't want to put your money in the bank? Oh, no, they're much too lenient. All I have to do is appear there with a check and they'll give me the money. They don't care how sick I am. Claudia, you are my friend. And you are going to make me well and wealthy. Well and wealthy. That'll be our little motto. Friend, I am in your hands. Good morning, Miss Treasurer. Good morning, Miss Popper. Well, you're very early. Yes, well, I took the subway and sent the bus this morning. It's five cents cheaper. Wonderful, Susie. Oh, and you'll be happy to know that I went right by Madame Sellers and nothing happened. Absolutely nothing. She isn't open this early. Uh, well, anyway, I brought my lunch from home. That's the saving key, you know. Just wonderful, Susie. Well, you're well on your way to... Oh, Oh, that costs money. Susie, it just makes me feel warm all over. Yes, I figured out that if I keep this up, in 154 years, I'll be the richest woman in town. <laughs> oh. International artist, good morning. Oh, hello, Cecile. Oh, yes, she's just going into her office. Wait a minute. Hello, Cecile. How are you? No kidding. A sale on petticoats? Well, how much are they? Really? With a Grecian motive? Oh, that sounds divine. I really need a petticoat. Yeah? Well, I'll pick one up on my way home. Thanks a lot for telling me. Oh, and have a good time on your vacation next week. Okay. Bye. <laughs> I wonder if 
if I could have eight ninety-five of my own money. For what? Well, for a petticoat. I just talked to Cecile. She said there's a wonderful buy on petticoats. No. <laughs> what do you mean, no? You cannot have eight ninety-five. But I need a petticoat. This isn't an extravagance. Cecile said it was a wonderful buy. Huh? Cecile. It has a Grecian motive. I wouldn't care if it has mother spelled all over it. Well, after all, it is my money. Really, Susie, I thought you wanted to help yourself. I thought you were on the road to recovery. Well, obviously, you've had a relapse. Oh, honey, don't be silly. Of course I haven't. And I want to be well and wealthy. But I don't think that you can cut a person off from their money suddenly. You know, you just have to do it sort of gradually. How gradual? Eight ninety-five graduate. <laughs> Not for a petticoat. <laughs> Well, I must say, I don't like your whole attitude. After all, this is my money. If I want to buy a hundred petticoats, it is none of your business, really. Susie, you can talk until you're blue in the face, but you will not get one cent out of me. As far as I'm concerned, it's my money, and I will give it to you as I please. Bye. Are you or are you not going to give me eight ninety-five out of my, and I underline my money? <laughs> I am not. Underline not. <laughs> Well, you realize, of course, this is nothing short of highway robbery. Be my guest, you which would call the police. Well, I intend to. They won't help you. Not even the FBI or wild horses could drag one cent out of me. <laughs> and this is final? Absolutely. Susie, I know how difficult and unpleasant this is for you to swallow, but it will do you a world of good. Thank you, and goodbye, Miss Cod Liver Oil. <laughs> you said about the last one. Well, it was all your fault. I spent it last week. <laughs> my fault? Yes, your fault. I asked you to keep my money for me, and did you? You did not. <laughs> really, Susie, what do you expect me to do when you come out here in torn undergarments? I 
expect you to be strong. That's what I expect. Well, I'm giving this check to someone who is strong. Someone who won't give me any of it, no matter what I tear up. Someone merciless. And uh, you want me to give you just one dollar a day? Yes, sir. I think it's time I buckled down and learned the value of a dollar. You know, it's funny, Susie. I've heard a fool and his money are soon parted, but I certainly don't consider you a fool. <laughs> well, thank you. But I think a lot of us are foolish about some things, Mr. Sands. That's what makes us human. My downfall is money. Okay, Susie, I'll take care of this. One dollar a day and not one cent more. And don't come in here with any hard luck stories. I intend to be merciful. Thank you, sir. I feel better already. And richer. Well, Cecile, what a nice surprise. I was in the building, so I thought I'd drop in. Is it all right? I mean, you're not swamped. Oh, no, of course not. Sit down. How are you? Yeah. Are you still on vacation? I go back Monday. Ah, oh, did you have fun? Why didn't you go away? Go away? You don't know me very well, Susie, do you? Well, you've worked in the building a year now. If you really knew me, Susie, you'd know I got a vice. A secret vice. I can't save two cents. I mean, I just can't. No. You don't know how I envy you and the other girls. You're always dressed so nice, and you always seem to have a dollar in the bank. A dollar seventy-seven. <laughs> don't make jokes, Susie. I don't know what's going to become of me. Well, ask Vi. She'll tell you. <laughs> People are constantly saying, Cecile, you must save for a rainy day. Well, I've got news for you, honey. You and I are sisters under the skin. Susie, <laughs> but that's a terrible thing. You know, we're not well, girls. <laughs> Just yesterday. I shudder when I think of it. What? They were having a big sale. Where? <laughs> Shop in my neighborhood? Well, I saw this cotton dress in the most divine shade of blue. Well, you know blue's my color. Oh, you look divine in it. It's very simple, with wonderful lines, and a small white PK collar and cuffs to match. No kidding, how much was it? $9.98. It had a little white PK collar. Yes. But I should have put the money in the bank and forgotten about it. I wonder if they have it in yellow. <laughs> they had it in everything. But I should have ignored the entire thing. Who needs a cotton dress? Yeah. Cecile, you sit here. I'll be right back. $9.98. <laughs> No. What do you mean, no? Not one red cent. Well, an emergency has arisen. Oh, not something like a new dress, I hope. A new dress? Yes, I'm afraid that wouldn't be emergencetic enough. Emergencetic? New word. I just made it up. Oh. Yes, that's very good. <laughs> you got to put it in the dictionary. What is your emergency? Well, this is really too shocking. Shocking? Yes, you know, shocking, electric. That's it. It's my electric bill. See, um, they're going to turn it off because it's delinquent and I'll be living in the dark. All right, Susie, I consider your electricity emergency. How much do you need? $9.98. Oh, here's 10 Oh, no, I don't want 10 I'll spend all of it. Just $9.98. I'm $9 afraid you'll have to take the 10 and let your conscience be your guide. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Here you are. Now get one for me, too. What? A cotton dress like yours, only I want it in yellow. Really, Susie, you're just as bad as I am. I know, so we might as well dress alike. What about a bag? Have you got a yellow bag? They've got one to match. No, just the dress. <laughs> a bag. Let me see. See, oh, well, I'll use my old linen bag. You know, the one with the rhinestone clip? But it's red. <laughs> Look awful, won't it? What am I going to do? I don't care what you do, but you can't wear a red bag with a yellow dress. Honestly, Susie, can you look me in the eye and tell me you'll be caught dead? <laughs> How much is the bag? Six dollars. Six dollars. They've got shoes to go with the bag. Now, wait a minute. You're ruining 
kidding me. I'll dye my gray shoes yellow. While you wear with your gray suit. So how much are the shoes? Eight dollars. Six dollars and eight dollars. Let me see, that's fourteen dollars. Oh, no, he'll never give it to me. Who? Mr. Simons. He's keeping my money for me. Let me see, dollars. Here, honey, you just... Now, you sit like this for me, will you? Mm -hmm. I'll, be, I'll be right back. You keep your head that way. Now, just sit there and don't move. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, come now, Susie. Don't tell me you have another emergency. Oh, no, I haven't. Oh, good. I was certain you'd come in for more money. Oh, well, I have. And it's an emergency, but it isn't mine. It's Cecile. Cecile? Yes, Cecile. Well, you don't know her. She works in the building. She's a very nice girl. But a few weeks ago, I borrowed $14 from her for an emergency I had. Now, she has an emergency of her own, and she needs the money. Susie, I find all this very hard to believe. Well, just come and see for yourself. <laughs> and she'll sit that way for hours, and I'll never get any work done. All right, Susie, all right, you win, but this is positively the last time. From now on, you don't even get it for emergencies, yours or anyone else's. $14. <laughs> And it won't happen again, sir. Absolutely not, sir. Uh, pardon me, sir. <laughs> All right, at ease. Now, look, here's for the bag, and here's for the shoes. But for heaven's sakes, don't bring them up here. Drop them off at my house. No, I'll tell you what else they've got. Now, Cynthia, please. Oh, the dress, the bag, and the shoes. Okay, the dress, the bag, and the shoes. Get out. You know, you have to pick up Celeste sheets and towels today. Oh, no, darling, not today. Next Friday. It's tonight! <laughs> well, now, let me look at my calendar. I... Oh. You spent the money, didn't you? You haven't any left. Now, if I don't get hysterical, we'll make this very simple. Oh, it's always so simple to you. <laughs> totally deaf. I don't hear a word you are saying. <laughs> but for your own good, you'd better hear me. Now, you've had three emergencies in the past ten minutes. That is practically a lifetime quota. Yes, but, Mr. Sands, I lied before. Those weren't emergencies, but this is. And if you don't give me that $40, I'll be an embezzler. You lied to me before to get money, and you will lie again. For your own welfare, I don't hear a word you are saying. But you've just got to believe me. All right, I'll prove it to you. Bye! You may be deaf to me, but you won't be deaf to her, I'm sure. You scream for me! Come here. Now, just tell Mr. Sands this is an emergency and it isn't my money. It's true, Mr. Sands. It's my money and Sylvia's and Gertrude's. Susie, wanton spending such as yours is a sickness. I've known girls who had this problem before. I've seen them lie and bring in friends to swear to it. Friends who can cry like Vi. They'll do anything to get their hands on money. Now, you could have Coxie's army swear that you need $40, and I wouldn't listen. <laughs> oh, my, stop crying. Stop thinking of something. Cecile! I'll get my money back from Cecile. All right, Vi, you can stop crying now. She's telling the truth, Mr. Sands. Yes, of course she is. And now, if you will excuse me, I must get a letter off to Napoleon. <laughs> but, Mrs. Broadhurst, are you sure? <laughs> but where did she go for the weekend? <laughs> well, don't you know the name of her friends on Staten Island? <laughs> oh, no, never mind. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, please, <laughs> stop the crying. <laughs> Why couldn't you lend me the phone?
forty dollars. Oh, I would, Susie, but I mailed my check to Aunt Martha in the country. <laughs> but, Georgia, this is an emergency. If you couldn't let me have forty, could you let me have thirty? Twenty? Ten? <laughs> Gee, honey, I'd like to help you, but I don't get paid until tomorrow. Why don't you try Madeline? Oh, I've already been to Madeline. Well, Rosemary. I've been to Rosemary, Madeline, Aloys, Hazel, Norn, and Erna. They all have excuses. Gee, I know how it is. Um, I know. Try Connie. She's just down the hall. Connie. All right, I will. <laughs> Connie. Susie, am I glad to see you. You are. Susie, I'm in a fix. Can you lend me a couple of dollars to pay? <laughs> Stella, you've just got to take these clothes back. I can't afford them, and I need the money. Terribly sorry, Miss McNamara, but we altered those things for you. And beside, you know all sales are final. Yes, well, I know that, dear, but this is the first time I've ever asked you a favor, and I need help. After all, I am your best customer. I'll never come in here again. That's what they all say. You'll be back, my dear. There's a sale next week. I'll give you $10 for the lot. $10? Are you out of your mind? I paid $75 for these clothes. They're brand new. They've never been worn. Oh, they're hot, huh? Hot? Do I look as though I'd steal? <laughs> Did you ever see light-fingered Mary? She looks like Whistler's mother. Did you ever see Borgia Bessie? She looks like Whistler's grandmother. Well, with your information, I did not steal these clothes. But please, I do need forty dollars. Ten's my limit, baby. <laughs> you better take it. Maybe I'll give you a break next time. Next time? Oh, don't think you won't be back, baby. I know your type just by looking at you. You're the kind if she makes fifty a week, spend seventy-five. Take a look around. I got dozens like you. Well, there won't be any next time because this is an emergency. <laughs> they all say that, but you'll be back. Inside a year, I'll have everything you own. You'll be back. <laughs> As if you've seen a ghost. I have. Mine. What happened? Susie. Oh, no, please, Mr. Sands, don't say a word. Not a word. I have had it. I knew that I had a weakness for spending, but I never thought it would lead me to this. I have become a liar. Oh, Susie. Oh, yes, I lied to you. And as if that weren't bad enough, I have become an embezzler. Susie, you must Yes, I embezzle from you and Sylvia and Gertrude. I just deserve no mercy. Do you feel that you have learned your lesson? <laughs> learned it? I can teach you. And I just had the most frightening glimpse into my future. Where? At a pawn shop. <laughs> this man. Oh, poor Susie. I'm sorry you had to learn the hard way, but it'll last longer. Here. You have graduated from Hard Knocks to Fort Knox. Thank you, Mr. Sands. It's too late to get to the linen shop now. Bye, I'll just have to tell the girls the truth. They all hate me. I wouldn't blame them if they tarred and feathered me. Surprise! <laughs> Your sheets and towels, all monogrammed. My sheets and towels? But, Mr. Sands, if you didn't believe me or Vi or even Coxie's army, what, what, what made you believe it? They said it's COD. I had to believe it. <laughs> and you paid for it? Uh, oh, thank you, Mr. Sands. Susie, it's after 6 o'clock. We've got to go. Oh, yes, the girls are waiting downstairs. I guess we'd better go. Well, thank you, Mr. Sands. Oh, I can't tell you how much... Hurry up, Susie. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You great, big, wonderful, merciless boss, you. <laughs>